Hey fishing friend, my name is JC with the Rad Railing Fishing. In this video, I'm going to be giving you tips and techniques for catching pompano on bridges. I've been wrecking them lately, guys. So yeah, I'm going to teach you some of the stuff that I've learned. But first, I want to give a shout out to some people. Julio, he's been teaching me how to catch pompano on bridges. I'll put a link to his Instagram in the description area. Bush from the Fish on Channel YouTube, he's been teaching me how to catch pompano on bridges. I'll put a link to his channel as well. All right, guys, let's get on with it. Gear. I like using a 4,000 size spinning reel, 15 pound test braid, 20 pound test monofilament leader. You can increase the leader size if you'd like to. Bush was fishing with 30 pound test the other day. I have a six foot six medium um, Shakespeare excursion graphite rod. I get these at Walmart. Look at that handle, super lightweight, $20 for these rod. I like using graphite rods, guys, because you can really, really feel the bite, especially when the wind's blowing hard. You're trying to keep a jig and a teaser on the bottom for catching these pompano. You can feel the slightest little bite from these pompano. Now, Here's something about when you're using a graphite rod up on the bridge. If you get a giant pompano, Julio helped me out with this the other day. I caught a huge pompano. He was hanging down in the water. I'm like, Julio, I've got a graphite rod. This thing is going to snap if I bring him up. Julio said, point the rod straight down, tighten down your drag, and reel the fish up. And when you get him to the point of when you can swing him up on the bridge, don't high stick. Do not grab your graphite rod up here. You will snap that rod. Use the handle, guys. One hand here, one hand here, and swing that pompano up on the bridge when you're using a graphite rod, and hopefully you're not going to snap it, unless you catch an absolute monster. Okay, let's go over the uh, jig and the teaser real quick. I'm specifically talking about fishing with jigs and teasers today. I'll put a link up here to a video that I made about different ways that you can rig jig and teasers for pompano fishing, but wacky jig, banana jig, silly jig, and you combine it with this little guy right here. Okay, I use different weights of jigs, 3 8 ounce, half ounce, 3 quarter, and 1 ounce. Those are the size jigs that I keep on hand, and I fish different weight jigs depending on how fast the current's moving and how hard the wind is blowing. It's important to keep the jig and the teaser down on the bottom. That's where those pompano are feeding. When you when it's not on the bottom, guys, you catch ladyfish, blue runners, Spanish mackerel, jacks. You catch all those fish that are in that mid to the top area of the water column. Yeah, you want that, that jig to stay down on the bottom. So you need to have some different weights. For jigs, guys, I like yellow, yellow and white. I like the chartreuse green, the chartreuse green and white, pink, pink and white. Um, yeah, those are the main colors that I like to use for pompano with a jig. And then for the teaser, I like pink. I like yellow and I like the bright chartreuse and um, sometimes I fish with a white teaser as well if I have them but you basically just keep mixing things up until you figure out you know what it is that the pompano want to hit now the other day I actually was using an orange teaser and uh, I caught a couple of pompano using an orange teaser so there's a little different color I'm experimenting with right now so it's springtime right now and these pompano are full of row, which means they are in the spawning mode. Just like Sheep's Head, just like Snook, these pompano are in the major inlets that are connecting the Gulf of Mexico to the intercoastal waterway. They are there to spawn and they're all along the beaches as well because they're migrating from south to north. They're following water temperatures, 60 and 7 degrees, 60 to 7 degrees apparently seems to be the magic numbers for pompano. But anyway, they are migrating through and they are very thick in the inlets. Now, I'm not the guy that gives exact locations but in general guys in general find yourself bridges and piers find shorelines where you can fish for pompano in the major inlets that's where they're at right now find a city southwest florida all the way to north florida and find a bridge find a major inlet and go jig for pompano there that's where they're going to be i don't need to tell you exactly where to go right uh, me and Bush were up on the bridge the other day, and he said, JC, you know, this is the area where the pompano like to hang out, is in here. This is where I catch them. We fished and fished and fished there. We weren't catching them. And so Bush decided to start moving around. And I learned this years ago with pompano, you have to keep moving around until you find them. Well, he found them. And I haven't posted the video, but he said something like, Catching them, everybody can catch. Finding them is tough. Yeah. Okay, so how many hours today to find? A long time. Like three, four hours. Yeah, we, we were jigging in an area where bushes like this is where we catch them. 
we weren't catching them several hours and then bush moved down a good ways and bam we got on the pompano so you have to keep moving around until you find the pompano so whether you're bouncing around to bridges and passes and piers you want to try different you want to try different tides and different times of the day when they're feeding um, and you also want to find different locations so you got to keep moving around it takes a lot of work guys i mean i literally have jigged from first thing in the morning all the way until sunset and not caught pompano when they are running you got to put in your time i mean bush said the other day at the jetties that he jigs for 10 hours at a time sometimes chasing pompano takes a lot of work but when you find them and when the bite is on like this day it was so rewarding bush kept telling me i am with the pompano master we're, I, gonna, we're gonna catch them it, it's I gonna promise you're gonna catch them he said jc all the conditions are right today do not leave he had to leave i had one pompano and right after he left the pompano bite turned on and within i think within an hour i caught five keepers and we had been up there jigging for a very long time so you have this little window when the pompano come through so let me talk about a little bit about the current right now so two hours before the tide change and two hours after the tide change so you've got a five hour window that seems to be the prime time you guys for catching pompano is right in that area right there now whether it's first thing in the morning when they're feeding or whether it's in the middle of the afternoon or close to sunset you'll have to discover that on your own now this doesn't mean that you can't catch pompano when the current is like really ripping really really fast or you can't catch pompano on those 16 hour tide days when the water is moving very slow. I've caught them on in all of those conditions, right? But that area where that tide is changing seems to be the prime time for catching pompano. And when they come through, it can happen so fast. Everybody starts catching them when the school comes through. It's crazy. The other day, um, I caught a pompano and all the guys that were on the west side of the bridge, as soon as I caught the pompano, they came over to the east side of the bridge and five or six people started hooking up with pompano. And had they stayed on the other side of the bridge, I would have probably limited out that day. The pompano came in, they fed for 20 minutes and they left and they never came back. The crazy thing about pompano fishing. So, so that's a little bit about the, the tide times. Now, when you're on the bridge and the tide is going away for you, we just drop the jig down and we just let that jig bounce away from the bridge in the current. And those pompano might be anywhere from the bridge to way out there. I mean, Bush told me just let that thing bounce way out there, JC. There's pompano all out there because when the current is moving, you've got little eddy areas that that are swirling and moving around and there might be little clear pockets of water out there where the pompano are hanging out and um yeah so you let let that thing just go out there a pretty good way just keep feeding line out make sure that you're keeping it on the bottom here again i just say it again you have to use the the right weight jig to keep them on the bottom all right so that takes care of the current going that way when the current is coming towards you you're casting out and you're just bouncing that jig on the bottom. In my previous video, I put a link up here where I gave t pompano tips in that video as well. I was basically saying that, you know, as soon as that jig and teaser hits the bottom, you bounce it up again so it hits the bottom. So you just keep it doing this bouncing motion. And I was catching pompano that way. This year, what I've learned on this bridge fishing and at the jetties, okay, sometimes just leave very long pauses in between. Let that jig and teaser roll around down there on the bottom. Captain Todd told me one time that somebody told him that this is supposed to represent a small shrimp, a crab, or a clam that's down on the bottom. So when we jerk it, it might like look like a little crab or a shrimp, right? But if we just let this thing roll around down on the bottom, this teaser right here looks like a little crab inside of a shell or a clam that is open as it rolls around and the pompano are attracted to that. And I have had a lot, I've caught quite a few pompano this spring season where I'm just letting that jig and teaser just roll on the bottom, just keeping a tight line. And you'll feel the pompano, they grab it, it feels like a pinfish. And you set the hook and the pompano fight is on and there's nothing like a pompano fight. That's a good one right there. That's a good one right there. That is a good one. They swim so fast and crazy, you guys, and they are muscular and powerful fish, and they are a lot of fun. 
to catch. So leave some long pauses, vary your retrieve. You know, try some twitch, twitch, twitch stuff and give it a good jerk every now and then, but also make sure you leave some long pauses, four, five, six seconds in there before you twitch it. And the other thing that I'm noticing is it's just a very little twitch. At least this is the way I've been fishing it, very gentle and light twitch most of the time. If you feel one hit it, like you feel him hit it, give that thing some twitch, 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 twitch. I mean, really give it some erratic action and they'll jump all over it. Um, but yeah, it's just a gentle kind of a twitch. But also you guys, you can give that thing, you know, a, a harder jerk as well. Yeah, about techniques, just try that. Vary things up and also move around to the different passes and locations and different areas on the bridge. All right, I wanna talk about wind, guys. In a previous video I made about Pompano, you know, when it's really, really windy, Pompano fishermen say, you know, this isn't the, the best conditions for Pompano fishing. Bush told me the other day, he is such an experienced Pompano fisherman, and I'm learning so much from him. He said this time of year when they are migrating through, they come through thick, and he said water clarity is not as important as different times of the year. So even in some little bit of cloudy, sandy water, you're gonna be catching pompano because of the migration, because they're spawning. They're in the inlets, guys. They are thick in these inlets right now. And, uh, but here's what I, I found out at the jetties the other day. I caught a limit of pompano. I didn't upload that video. I did show some pictures of that, but um, the other day, I said that was like a month ago, I caught a limit of pompano. It was on a windy day. The wind was blowing about 16 to 20 miles an hour. It was blowing out of the south. I mean, it didn't start out that way. And I was thinking, oh, the pompano fishing is going to be terrible now that the wind has picked up. But the truth of the matter is the pompano fishing was on fire. What happened is the water started getting like all stirred up and sandy, but there were some clear areas, like clear streams of, of water in, in the middle of all of that stirred up sand and the pompano were hanging out around those clear streams of water and I limited out that day. I didn't limit out in this one area, but anyway, you get my point guys, just because it's windy, don't get discouraged about pompano fishing. Check the wind direction, look at the, the land areas, you know, maybe you're gonna be fishing in an area where the wind is gonna be blocked. Uh, by buildings and land and stuff like that. One of the things that happens though, being on the southwest coast of Florida, if you have a direct western a wind that's coming out of the west and is blowing into the east, if it continues to do that, the water gets so stirred up and mucked up and messy. And then if you have rain and stuff like that, these conditions definitely affect the pompano fishing. If that water is nasty, the other day I went to the jetties, it looked like the the worst green pea dark soup in the world. I'm like, no way. Pompano fishing is not good today. So just because it's windy, guys, don't get discouraged. Uh, get out there and you might find some clear water in different areas, but you just gotta get out there and experiment. And you just gotta get out there and adventure and find different places to fish. So I've covered a lot of stuff here, guys. I've covered gear, I've covered the jigs, the different weight of the jigs. I've talked about the pompano migration. They like to follow water temperatures of 60 to 70 degrees. This time of year, you're gonna find them in the passes, in the inlets. I've talked about the different tides and the times. I've talked about wind water clarity, and um, you gotta keep moving around finding. I've talked a little bit about the techniques for catching these pompano. Now, you guys are equipped, all right? Go get all your stuff together and get out there and find some pompano because this is a very small window right now. During the spring, they're not gonna be hanging out all this time. So if you're planning on coming to Florida in July, you know, don't plan on going to the pass and jigging and catching pompano in the pass in July. You might, but right now is prime time because the water temperature is right and they are migrating north, okay? All right, I hope you guys got some valuable information out of this. A huge thank you to my friend Julio and Bush for really teaching me a lot about fishing for pompano on bridges. I have to give credit where credit is due, you guys. And some of this stuff um, I have learned on my own, some experiences and techniques as well that I've shared in this video. Make sure you check out this video that's up here on different ways to rig for digs, jigs and teasers. And make sure that you check out my other video, you guys, on that has Pompano secrets in it. And check out all those links in the description area to my friends who are Pompano fishing masters. Thumbs up or appreciated. Get out there and go fishing, man. Life is fun. Live it. See ya!